So here we are in the trunk of the C70, all comfortable. Um, removed the cover for in the front corner of the trunk that covers the pump. It was fastened with two uh, 10 millimeter hex nuts and uh, pushed into two dowel pins over here. And uh, next we found the pump exposed here, uh, just in its uh, gray green uh, sound absorbing foam cover had uh, two zip ties around it that can just be pushed off to the side We pull off the top of the cover and here is our pump in all its glory Now I will make myself even more comfortable to show you more details So Let's put some paper towel on the pants and uh, Here we get a better view the pump has a minimum maximum marker for the fluid level on the reservoir. Um, now you do see a dark line here that is actually the older fluid line for from where the fluid had been before just above minimum. Typically it's just above minimum with the top up when uh, most of the cylinders are extended whereas when the top is down uh, the fluid level comes closer to the maximum. The reason we still see the dark line here and it's not moving is that a sludge from the old fluid in the system. Um, sludge develops simply from uh, mostly from decaying seals inside the hydraulic cylinders where microparticles get suspended in the fluid and um, turn into something dark sludgy and uh, it's a good idea after the car is maybe 10 years old to uh, siphon or dump most of the old fluid out and to refill it with new fluid. And uh, now let's talk about hydraulic fluids. Obviously you can buy Volvo fluid and that is identical to um, Pentocene CHF202. You can also use Pentocene CHF11S, which I personally don't like because it has a very offensive odor and it tends to corrode clear coat if you spill it. My favorite is Febby Bilstein, Febby part number 02615, which is the generic um, identical fluid to what's used in Mercedes, BMW and Porsche. The Mercedes part number is 00098991103. This fluid is cheap, um, has been around for a long time, is well proven and um, we recommend it for any modern convertible top. So to fill the fluid we just um, unscrew the uh, fill plug up here and fill to the proper level. Let's just call it between minimum and maximum with the top up right now and um, that should work. Now if you have taken cylinders out of the car like we have just done on this one then uh, the cylinders are still full of air. The system is self-venting as soon as you've cycled the cylinders a couple of times they have pushed the air back into the pump's reservoir and sucked fluid in. So if you've replaced the cylinders in the stop then you actually want to um, move the uh, fill up, overfill the reservoir a little bit and leave the fill screw loose and um, cycle the top manually uh, once or twice and keep refilling. After a couple, latest after three cycles, all the air should be out of the system and at that point you can make the final adjustment for the proper fluid level. Of course the fluid level is red when the pump is uh, level. If you need to replace the pump, um, two ways to go about it. One is with wiring harness and one is without. Here is a pump with a wiring harness. Um, it actually is easier to take the wiring harness off the pump than it is to take the trim pieces out of the trunk here. So theoretically if you wanted to um, uh, leave the wiring harness on the pump then you would have to take the trim piece uh, behind my back off to trace the pump's wiring harness back to the control unit uh, behind my back. Uh, the easier way in my opinion is to um, remove the wires from the solenoids. So there's four wires on the solenoids and then there is the wires on the motor. Well, let me demonstrate that on the uh, stock pump here. I have already taken the um, plastic cover off the motor. It's simply... Oh, which way did it go? 
get snapped together back here like this and you just get your fingers under this cover unsnap it take it out you see there's a red dot where the red wire red water motor wire goes you take off the red and black and you disconnect the thermal sensor then you just uh, pull the four wires off the solenoids it's easily done if you have a small a flat screwdriver handy put it in here and lever it up and out comes your wire very easy the length of the wire actually explains already which wire goes where but I'll spell it out quickly here what do we have red and green on the top left we have purple red uh, bottom left we have red yellow on the right top we have red blue on the right bottom it's, it's hard to mix up these wires so don't worry too much about it what's left to do is uh, take out the emergency uh, release cable and pull out the hoses let me show you in place I will protect myself with this paper towel here to take the hoses out there are these T20 uh, bolts each bolt holds uh, two hoses in place just uh, unscrew the bolt and um, then pull out the hose or hoses there's two hoses usually with each bolt so here we have hose number 93 the same number is stamped on on the pump pull the hose out and uh, let's just act as if we had pulled all the other hoses out already as if we had the new uh, pump in place here we just push the hoses back in and secure them with our t25 bolt and uh, then the last thing is the safety and actually pressure release valve that uh, you activated when you pulled uh, the cable under the uh, um, rear bench we just undo another t25 bolt here and walk this little brass ball out of the retainer pull it out and to put it back in push it back in here yeah. deal with the spring don't get the spring caught the way I did here there we go it snapped back and we put the bolt back on and we're all set okay this needed to be pulled into the uh, secured position the cable will pull the valve so that actually the pressure relief valve here will pop up as soon as you move something